thank you for staying with us on this Saturday that seems to be all eyes peeled on River State. Well, we're moving away from politics now and from elections and all that, and we're going to talk some religion, or should I say, living. <laughs> So the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints holds its annual October conference, which is coming up very soon. And uh, there's a team with us this morning who are going to tell us a lot more about it. It's my pleasure to welcome the team, which is led by the president, Mr. Ogochuku Mwailele, who is the stake president for Lagos, Nigeria, Festac Stake. Thank Good you. Good morning. Bonnie. Thank you for joining us. Um, we have um, Happiness Felix Ibiang, Secretary in the Primary Organization. Yes. And we also have Mrs. Adenike Bamishai, Stake Relief Society President of Abuja. Oh, you've come all the way from Abuja. That's correct. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. So, uh, Mr. President of uh, the First Act Stake. This conference holds every year. This is October already, so it's going to hold very soon. Before we talk about the dates and all that, what are we expecting from this year's conference? Great. This is general conference. We invite all to join millions to come hear the words of living prophets and apostles as they will teach us more about the Savior Jesus Christ and how we can find complete healing and hope in his atonement. Heavenly Father speaks to us through his prophets who share their personal testimonies of the Savior. And millions who will be joining in this weekend can learn for themselves how they can be better people in the society, in their families at large. You have said you are inviting everybody. Um, how can everybody be part of it? Everybody in quotes. <laughs> and so the conference, even though it's held in Salt Lake City, Utah, will be streamed live um, and in, in Nigeria. People okay. can join in through channels, television, okay. and online. Okay, so, and in addition, um, we have the YouTube, because it's going to be streamed live on YouTube, so people can actually, you know, link in and watch. Yeah, I, I was actually going to ask about, you know, the platforms. When, when she asks the question, how, people, how can people be a part of it, what are the platforms? Okay, for Nigeria, we have channels television. So, and it's actually going to start this evening because oh. we're going to have like four sessions. Okay. We're going to have the evening session starting by 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. that's, they're going to, that's a live broadcast. Mm -hmm. Then tomorrow morning, we're going to have like a rebroadcast of Saturday evening. Okay. Because okay. you know, they're going to have like an evening session today and by that time we'll be sleeping in Nigeria. So we'd rather just have people linking tomorrow morning by 11 a.m. So that's on channels television again. Then by 4.30, we're going to have the morning session again on, um, that's on Sunday. So, channel seems to be our go-to okay. for, there is the platform for Nigeria. But you also mentioned YouTube. Yes, so YouTube okay. is... So, do you, YouTube is going to be real-time? Real-time, yes. Okay, so, the one that's uh, midnight there, people can see it, if they are able to stay up late. Yes, that's correct, okay. they can. So, what are the, okay, let me, let me come to you. Um, Madam Happiness. What are the expected takeaways from this conference? Okay, so we know that our individual lives depend on Jesus Christ. Our lives are centered on Him. So we expect to view messages of peace, love, and then apply these principles to help us increase our faith in Jesus Christ and become more closer to Him. And when we apply these principles, we get to see good results. So the positive feedback or impact we are going to get from this conference is uh, the changes we get after applying these principles. Mm. So tuning in and listening to the men of God speak to us and heed to their counsel will bring good real messages and a lot of changes in our individual lives. Mm. You know, um, 
as uh, the president said, many would want everyone. She, he wants everyone to be there, uh, all the millions to join other other millions. Yes. But most of these millions, expectedly, will be young people. What is the takeaway from them for the young people? Okay, for the young people, as we all know, in our country today, we face difficulties, we, ch we face challenges, we face things that most times bring down our spiritual life and make us think about the future with dismay and sadness. So they take to the young people concerning these conferences that they should stay tuned and then listen to words from our true prophets that will help them navigate mortality and help us tackle challenges that would have brought us down and then maybe derailing from the right path that we are supposed to be. So when we listen to this conference, we tend to get messages and insights that are really powerful and will help us. Um, Mr. President, I noticed in that um, little, should I call it a commercial, or should I say invitation that was played, that it was all young people. Is there any particular reason why it was all young people? Because no. I know for a fact that number one, you're calling young people to a conference. Number two, you're calling them to a religious conference. They hardly have time for all that. <laughs> they, have, they have other fish to fry. Oh, this invitation is not limited to young people alone. It's invitation to all. Um, conferences are a time when the Lord speaks to the whole world. You know, despite your um, nomination, your age and race, the invitation to come here, the words of prophets and apostles, and listen to the Savior is available to all. And so... Yeah, my question is, is there any particular reason why you used only young people? Well... Is that a special appeal to them or what? Okay, let me say, you know, in the church, we believe in the rising generation. Yes. The young ones are the rising generation because the old people will definitely move aside. Mm -hmm. And if they are not, like, being involved now, when we are now, then, you know, we might lose it up. So in the process of not being able to lose it, we are bringing the rising generation, the younger ones, closer so that they can feel and understand and be able to do the right thing you know, when they are called upon. Because the young shall grow, we all know. Of course. So it's best to catch them young so that when they grow, they will not depart from the faith. Okay. I think uh, me, you, you wanted to add to that. Yes. Yeah, she already said most of it. Okay. okay. Let, let, me, let me come to you. What has been your, I mean, what, how has uh, this, uh, com this annual conference affected your life? Okay, particularly, I would love to share an experience when in one of the conferences they talk about being a peacemaker. And I personally come to find out that after I applied that particular principle, I had this joy and happiness in me, in a situation I found myself that had been bothering me for a long time. And then applying this principle of being a peacemaker helped me in my individual life. And I was happy, it brought peace and happiness. What, what does that mean, being peacemaker? Okay, in our country today, we find ourselves in challenges, in situations between our neighbors, our friends, even in the family and in the home. So you've been able to tackle these problems and knowing the fact that you, you've been admonished to be a peacemaker in this generation, it rings and bring to our individual um, knowledge, or shall I say personal, it's my mind that, okay, in a situation like this, I'm not supposed to go overboard. I'm supposed to act this way. And doing that, it makes me a peacemaker. And I can avoid situations that will become complex in the future and everybody will be at peace. How about you? Just like the Savior did, he went about doing good. And so as all joining this conference this weekend, they'll learn more about the Savior and learn to pattern themselves, their lives, just like the Savior lived his life. Mm. To be peacemakers, with their neighbors, their families, and the society at large. I'm asking, how has, it, how has the conference benefited you? Do you have any experience like she does? Okay, so growing up, I've always participated in general conferences, and it has blessed me at every point in my life. Now, as a father and parent, now, participating in general conference with my family in the last conference helped us 
overcome one challenge that we had as young parents. Now, we have this tradition in my home to study the scriptures with our children. And each time we bring the scriptures, we notice that our children would immediately fall asleep, or the younger ones play. And so we kept thinking about this until when we listened to the last conference, a sister shared her experience of how her children gained personal testimonies for themselves. And so that kept us you know, thinking until we found um, ways we could better address the issue of teaching our children. And as we got to do that using visuals and other aids, we found our children grow. You know, my son and daughter now pray. You see them praying by themselves. And that gives us some comfort that these children are learning and they are aligning their faith in the right direction in Jesus Christ, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Madam, yeah. your own experience. Okay, um, I would like to share more of like, because being a woman and something that drives them to all women, there was actually at a general conference once where we learned that we need to be storing food. You know, like you store food, you store water, and maybe some drugs and things like that for a period of six months. And why was that? Um, that was more like so that in case of an eventuality, you don't know what might happen. We might have war, you might have, you know, unrest and things like that. Or you might even, you might be working and maybe you lose the work. So at least for the period of that six months, you know that your family has something that they can rely on. Those are the kind of things, you know, like as a professor sometimes that comes out, that they speak out at the general conference that I could say, yes, I have picked on and I've acted upon with me and my children that have given me peace, hope, and joy, you know, in not only in my life, also in my family's life. Mm. So those are the kind of things that, you know, they speak about that we pick up and we learn at general conferences. So there are sometimes there are just lifestyle topics. Not only we have lifestyle, we have the spiritual. I'm just asking that. I mean. It's a general one. It could talk on different things. You see, the three of us spoke about different experiences, yeah. so it cuts across everything. And we can also then we can also learn to be kinder. We can learn to be, you know, more helpful in our society because that's one of the things that our church stands for, being helpful in the society. So, and we learn more and more as, you know, as time goes on. You know, when I think about your experiences, what you have just related, I wonder why Nigeria is not a better place. If we all went to church and we all came away with what you people have come away with from being at your conferences, then we should have a better country, don't you think? I think Nigeria can be a better place and that's why we're here to invite Nigerians and all <laughs> to listen to the Savior this weekend. Why are you so predictable? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, is there any, do, where can people find more information about the church? Um, now, um, the church official website is churchofjesuschrist.org. Um, for Africa, africawest.churchofjesuschrist.org. Information about this conference, information about the church, uh, available on this site. And we also have full time missionary. Sorry, the site is Church of Jesus Christ. 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 Org. Dot org. Yes. And Africa West dot Church of Jesus Christ dot org. So this is one of the websites. Yes. Okay. okay. So I can see, okay, as uh, Madam said the other time, uh, today from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., there is a session. And then. Uh, on Saturday tomorrow, tomorrow is uh, se an afternoon session, music and spoken word. The, can you tell us about that music and spoken word, madam? Okay, this, it's a um, period when, you know, we have a choir that we call them the Moment Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. So they sing, they speak, and, you know, people listen to music. You know, music is like, um, it calms the soul. So it's a period that actually precedes, you know, the general comfort. People listen to music, you are calm, you are like in a good mood to receive whatever teachings that might come up from the prophets and the apostles. Mm. Want to add to that? Okay, so we learned that a, the songs of the righteous is a prayer unto our Heavenly Father. Most of these songs contain good lyrics that can personally touch us and 
be of good impact to our lives. Mm. What so other, important. Yeah. What other, what, what should anyone prepare to come with? To in during the conference. Yes. Anything. Anything you have in mind, most times you don't even know what is bothering you personally. Mm. But once you listen to this conference, you tend to find out something that maybe you could work on. Okay. And then as individuals, most times we want to become close to the Savior, but we don't have the means or we don't know where to start in becoming close to Him. So viewing this conference will give us a hint how to start and where to start. Mm. Yes, sir. Well, to, to participate in this conference, we want people to come with questions. So searching questions. Whatever your story is, whatever your experiences in life are, we we know that there is balm in Gilead. You know, the gospel of Jesus Christ and the atonement of Jesus Christ solves all problems. And in this conference we will learn the, the life of Jesus Christ and it will bless those who come with desire to know how they can be better persons. You said people should come with questions. Is it interactive? Well, they come with questions in their minds. Oh, and as, okay. as speakers speak, by the power of the Holy Ghost, they'll be taught the truth. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us about the conference? Okay, yes. I just want people that are coming because as we are all sons and daughters of God, we should come with a listening ear. It's not enough to just sit in front of the TV and just be watching. But if you actually listen to the words that are being spoken, it will actually go straight to our soul. And yeah, like they said, there might be one thing or the other that might have been bothering you, in which the answers will be at that conference. Mm. So the conference is this evening, 5 p.m. Nigerian time, on channels television, and you can also follow on YouTube live, and repeat tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock, also on channels television. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming to tell us about the October conference. Um, we hosted the president, Ugochukunwa Elele, stake president for Lagos, Nigeria, Festac Stake, um, Happiness Felix Ibiang, secretary in the primary organization, as well as Adeni Keba Mishaye, stake relief society president of Abuja, Nigeria, we say steak. Thank you very much for coming to tell us about this conference. And good luck this evening and tomorrow morning. Sunrise will return in just a moment with another interesting conversation. Please stay with us.